Hi there, welcome to Two for Tuesdays. I am Mo McClanahan and I am the Director of Training and Education for Safe Surfing. I'm also an investigator with the Christiansburg Police Department in Virginia and I have been working internet crimes against children for the last eight years. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to talk about having that hard conversation with your little ones and talking to them about when it's okay to share secrets. And I know for me growing up, there were a lot of things that we were taught when it came to telling secrets or um, having privacy, especially with having multiple siblings. Um, my, my mom taught us that you don't violate each other's privacy, whether we have a diary or um, something that another sibling overheard and kind of tattle on. And I just want to kind of break that myth of how we were raised. And reason being is that, you know, I started thinking about some of the presentations that I've been giving over the years, whether it's talking to kids or talking to adults. And I always address the topic of stranger danger. And I show this kind of silly video clip from Saturday Night Live. And, you know, the officer comes in and talks about the the typical stranger danger of the man in a van who is offering candy to children. And he's trying to explain to them that you don't take candy from strangers and whether or not they're being nice to you, whether or not they introduce themselves and you, and you exchange names and locations and all of that. And I really love the clip because it represents basically how strangers approach children online. And so, you know, I'm trying to break away the mindset that stranger danger is just the man in a van down the street and it is the man on the computer or woman on the computer that is trying to lure children to talk to them and give them information. So instead of the candy, they're going to use grooming techniques such as, you know, using flattery to tell them that they look pretty. They're going to ask for pictures. They might ask for location. And I really just wanted to hit home with this because um, a lot of times when this happens with children, it's they're told to keep it a secret. They're told to not tell an adult and that it's their little secret, that it's nothing wrong with it. And that is an issue. And so I really want to like encourage you to start having these conversations with your children in reference to being approached either on or offline by a stranger and never being afraid to tell. And then also never being afraid to tell if a friend has told them that they've met a stranger or that somebody was talking to them and really getting out of the mindset that they're being a tattletale. Because in this day and age, I'm telling you predators are more and more online because they know that the children are online because it's required by school to be online and now as we transition back into the school year, the children that have been, you know, enjoying the summertime, enjoying some, you know, off the screen time, they know that they're coming back. And so I really want to push this, this topic about the stranger danger and knowing that, you know, giving the children some tools to equip them so they know how to handle it and they know not to give out any kind of private information, not to tell people where they live, not to share images and have all of those points to to really, you know, keep having that conversation with them. And I know like a lot of people are like, yeah, Mo, we already know that. We've already told them about strangers online. Even um, in a, a past episode, I had talked about 
how I've educated my son that the difference between real friends and friends online and that he's not allowed to talk or participate in certain games with people that he has never met in person. And I've even heard him talking to his friends saying, we can't play with strangers. Like if there's a stranger in our party, then we cannot play. And there's been some arguments between the friends, but knowing that my son sticks up for that and knows that what's right and wrong, even if his friend's going to be mad at him, he will choose to leave the game if they continue to play with strangers. And that's because we're continuing having that conversation. I am always rewarding him when I hear him stick up for himself against his friends and consoling him when he is, there are tears that are involved with that. And that's normal. But I'm always rewarding him and I reassure him that he's making the right choice. And so with that, you know, talking about strangers and everyone saying, yeah, we, we've done that, we've hit that topic. I want to go a little bit further and hit something that's really sensitive and that's when they're not strangers. So maybe they're family friends or they're family. And what I, I failed to really push that in my presentations and so that is definitely something new that's going to be added because we're seeing the increase of family or familiar uh, people actually reaching out to children online in a very inappropriate way and people that they know because they're testing the waters and having said that they too will use words such as this is our little secret, or don't tell mom and dad, or you're just so special to me. And so having to distinguish that and know that, you know, the family friends and family know that the children are online. And so they're just going to try to get a reaction and to see if it's something that might go a little bit further the next time they're in person. So I know this is a really tough topic to have with your, your kids because nobody wants to ever believe it's going to happen, but a really high statistic of children that are being sexually abused is by somebody they know. And, you know, I've worked a few cases where they have talked about, the suspects have talked about approaching people that they knew that definitely wasn't the family, but maybe a family friend, or they thought that they were a little bit more distant, that they didn't fear them telling, and they would try small little tactics to try to see if it's something that they can go a little bit further with. So um, sending a picture, sending a naked picture, asking for a naked picture. And then next time, if they're in person, if the pictures are being exchanged, then they already feel like they've gained this trust or they have something against the child that they can uh, really make the move on doing something on hand or hands on, sorry. So, you know, having these conversations starting out with the actual strangers and what they might be saying, but also people that they know and what they might be saying. And again, this is really where we get to the two for Tuesday. So the topic is, you know, talking about secrets and when it's okay to tell and that they're not being tattletales. And then the next step is equipping you with some tools. So we've talked a little bit about education and really um, having this ongoing, like not just one and done, we've talked about it, we've touched that subject. Children need to hear it over and over, just like they need to hear the positives over and over. So remember to just be mindful of having these conversations. And then again, with any kind of device, and I've had many questions recently about this, and that is what 
monitoring apps do you recommend? And I usually give several just so you can do the research to figure out which app is best going to fit your family lifestyle. So depending on the devices that you're using and depending on if you're using an iOS or an Android base or a personal computer. So one, I recommend Bark and they actually will cover all of the operating systems. So Android, iOS, and they're also you can use on Chromebooks. And then Light 360 is really amazing and that's even for the older teenagers that you have and that way you can kind of see their locations and you can see, I know some of them talk about um, being able to see how fast they're going in a vehicle. So that's a really great one. And then Net Nanny. So that one has been around for a very long time and they're always um, increasing the the different capabilities of what they have and what they can monitor. So these monitoring apps are a step above the family monitoring that you might get from your service provider. And those can really, the service provider can monitor text message, phone calls, and maybe like a screen time, but they can't monitor the apps. And so that's why you need an additional parental monitoring app because they can go into some of the social media and see the conversations that are being held inside and who their contacts are and and who's um, sending them images or videos. So those are a lot of my tips. And, and really this got me thinking about something I learned a while back at a conference and that was the case with Emily Smart when she was abducted. And this is a, it's a little different, but it, it's related. And, and really what I learned is that children are taught to respect their elders, respect their family, um, not to talk back and not to punch or hit or anything like that. And when they learned that about Emily, she was being taught that as well, that when she was abducted by the older man, he, um, she was taught not to strike an adult, no matter who it was, to be respectful. And so she didn't know to fight back. And so this really kind of relates to this topic because if we're te teaching our children to be respectful and to not fight back against adults or even you know family members be respectful, then they won't know to fight back if it's a family member that is approaching them that is trying to go hands on. And it's just something that is ingrained in their mind. And so if we kind of break that cycle and tell them that it is okay, like this behavior is not appropriate for anybody to do to you. Um, and these are the tools and uh, actions that you need to take when this happens. And always come to you know a parent or whoever, guardian, and be able to have these conversations. So if you're having it already proactively, then if anything were to happen, they would definitely feel comfortable coming to you reactively after the fact because it's already a conversation that's happening in your home and they feel like you're going to believe them and they feel like it's safe to be able to tell that secret. So I know it's a very sensitive subject, but we have to have it and we have to continue to educate each other and to help each other out and get back to raising these children, you know, as a village because with them online and us parents working still, we all have to look out for each other and for these children because number one is the safety of our kids everywhere. And I always tell the kids when I when I do presentations that if you live in my community, you're my kid. Like I am a mom and I truly feel like I need to protect them. And so the education that I give them is the best way I can first just equip them and empower them to make decisions that will keep them safe. 
and that's what I'm doing for you tonight. So here at Safe Surfing, we are all about educating you, equipping you with the knowledge, understanding what's going on in the world, having that awareness so you can always have it in your forefront of your mind so you will talk to your children about this and prevent them becoming victims. And that's our number one mission with Safe Serpent. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please make sure you send us a, a direct message. We'll be answering any questions you have. If you would like for me to touch on a different topic next week, then make sure you send us that as well. And always go back to the IGTV episodes for anything that you have missed because there's other topics in, in the different broadcasts. And as always, please be safe and happy beginning of school <laughs> to you guys. And let us know if you need anything. All right, you guys take care. Thank you.